From a rocket that spiraled out of control during a routine test, and a computer glitch that caused the Ariane 5 rocket to disintegrate mid-flight, to a Japanese company who watched their dreams literally go up in smoke, and a festival in Thailand that didn't go according to plan. Here are 10 rocket launches that went horribly wrong. The space race heated up in 1961, when Soviet pilot Yuri Gagarin became the first human to reach orbit. On the US side, President Kennedy began dumping massive amounts of money into space exploration. Much of that money went toward the unmanned Atlas Centaur project. The first Centaur arrived at the launch pad in Cape Canaveral in October of 1961. But several technical problems, including a severe hydrogen fuel leak, caused it to sit there for seven months. Finally, the Centaur was ready for launch in May of 1962, but a faulty insulation panel sent the whole thing spiraling out of control. Malfunction. For reference, Neil Armstrong was seven years away from landing on the moon. Still, watching the Centaur explode didn't make anyone too excited. The Centaur program didn't have a stellar history either. It was supposed to be the world's first launch vehicle with a liquid hydrogen-fueled stage. Five of the first seven test flights ended in failure, including this one. Finally, the eighth mission proved successful. At the time, a congressional investigation called the overall management of the Centaur program weak. Werner von Braun wanted to cancel the whole thing. Today, NASA considers the Centaur to be America's workhorse in space. The Ariane 5 rocket is a heavy-lift space vehicle built and operated by a French company called Ariane Space. They like to call the Ariane 5 the world reference for heavy lift launchers. It can carry 10 metric tons into geostationary transfer orbit, or GTO, and over 20 metric tons into low Earth orbit. The first Ariane 5 took flight on June 4th of 1996. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as planned. It blasted off from a launch pad in French Guiana. 37 seconds later, it was blown to smithereens. Would you believe that a computer bug in the rocket's inertial reference system was the reason it blew up? That tiny glitch ruined a $370 million launch and delayed further research for another four years. Now let's unpack what happened here. The internal reference system tells the Ariane 5 whether it's pointing up or down. This is also known as the rocket's horizontal bias. It uses billions of data points to keep the rocket straight. However, they tried cramming all that data into a 16-bit space. In simpler terms, they tried to run Elden Ring on PlayStation 2. This caused the engines to overcorrect, forcing the rocket to tilt 90 degrees. The aerodynamic forces ripped the entire thing to shreds. The S-300 series is a family of surface-to-air missiles developed by the former Soviet Union. They appeared in the 1970s and became popular in Russia, Ukraine, and other Eastern Bloc countries. S-300s are defense missiles. They're meant to shoot down aircraft, drones, and incoming offensive weapons. So, to ensure these defense systems are working, Russia conducts regular tests in open fields. On May 24th of 2011, the Russians conducted one such test. The first launch went great. The second, not so much.
That missile was doomed from the start. The first one took off on a nice arc, but the second spiraled out of control. For the record, S-300 missiles aren't supposed to corkscrew through the air. Things get a little scary when it looks like the rocket is coming back toward them. It flies through the air for 20 harrowing seconds before exploding. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the max range on your standard S-300 is about 93 miles. The warhead itself weighs between 293 and 315 pounds. Each is equipped with an automated guidance system that locks onto incoming targets. The Kremlin likes selling these missiles to China, Venezuela, Iran, and Egypt. Some NATO countries like Greece, Slovakia, and Bulgaria also have some in their arsenal. On April 20th of 2023, a massive crowd gathered near the SpaceX Starbase in Chica, Texas. They came to watch the 40-story Starship rocket launch into space. According to SpaceX, Starship is the most powerful launch system ever developed. Once they get it right, it'll be able to carry 100 people on long-duration interplanetary missions. But the only way to ensure Starship is safe is to test it. Elon is going to burn through several prototypes until he builds one that works. April 20th of 2023 was the most progress they'd made to date. Things got off to a great start. According to SpaceX, everything after leaving the launch pad was uncharted territory. The rocket keeps getting faster and faster, quickly blowing past 300 miles per hour. It banks right as it surpasses 2.5 miles, or about 13,000 feet. Then, it punches through the area of greatest atmospheric pressure right around 26,000 feet at over 600 miles per hour. This is when things head south, literally. As you can see, a few of the engines stopped working. The thrust was enough to punch through the atmosphere and reach the boundaries of space, but it was during stage separation that things went horribly wrong. The first stage should have separated at the three-minute mark. From there, nine engines in the secondary stage would have carried Starship into space. Instead, the rocket began tumbling for a long, harrowing minute. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Starship didn't explode by accident. SpaceX tweeted afterward that the Flight Termination System, or FTS, basically a self-destruct button, kicked in to prevent further danger. Even though it was back to the drawing board, the failed launch was extremely helpful. In the words of Thomas Edison, I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. It was late October of 2014, and the International Space Station needed supplies. Normally, NASA would just send a rocket up there to resupply the station. But they recently cancelled their space shuttle program in 2011. Now they contract private companies to run the resupply missions. One of those companies is called Orbital Sciences. Their job was to fly the unmanned Antares rocket up to the station. The two-stage rocket had already proven it could make this trip. October 28th would have been its third mission to the space station. The payload? About 5,000 pounds of supplies and equipment. After what Mission Control called a flawless countdown, the Antares rocket catastrophically failed.
Five, four, three, two, one. CRS mission to the ISS. That main engine's at 108%. AVI is powered on. The failure left mission control in stunned silence. What do you even say when the rocket blows up in midair? Thankfully, the astronauts were not in danger of running out of food or supplies. Now, nobody was injured during the explosion. The facility, and obviously the rocket, sustained significant damage. According to Frank Culbertson, Orbital's executive vice president, something went wrong immediately after launch. A safety officer sent a self-destruct command to the rocket, and the whole thing blew up. After NASA ended its space shuttle program, it signed deals with two private companies. Orbital got $1.9 billion to embark on eight resupply missions. Elon Musk's SpaceX got $1.6 billion to fly 12 missions. In 1997, a group of Japanese space enthusiasts decided they wanted to build a rocket. Interstellar Technologies, or IST, was born. Their mission was to provide the cheapest means for launching satellites into orbit. They also wanted to be the first Japanese company to send a rocket into space. Their dream was finally coming true on June 30th of 2018. They positioned their 10-meter Momo 2 rocket on the launch pad and began the countdown. They had already done this song and dance once before. The first launch was only a partial success. This time, they'd get it right, or not. The smoke made it higher than the rocket ever did. IST President Takahiro Inagawa said the failure was likely due to a main engine problem. Seeing how the rocket lost all thrust after liftoff, that sounds about right. It had been a rough road leading to the Momo 2 failure. IST lost the Momo 1 rocket in July of 2017 after a break in communications. Then the first Momo 2 launch was delayed due to a nitrogen leak in April of 2018. IST finally hit a stroke of luck in 2019. They successfully sent the Momo 3 68 miles into space, officially becoming the first private Japanese company to do so. See? Dreams can come true. The Russians like to boast that the S-300 is better than the US Patriot missile system. We beg to differ. These Soviet S-300s keep failing left and right. This next failure comes from the Astrakhan region of southern Russia, in a desert near the Caspian Sea. In August of 2016, Russian troops stood back and watched their S-300 shoot up into the air. Once again, the thrusters didn't kick in and the payload fell back to Earth. When the S-300 exploded on the ground, it set off a violent chain reaction. Thankfully, everything was contained to the launch site. Just look at how it keeps burning. Now, we imagine watching this rocket fall back to Earth is one of the worst feelings you can have. This was supposed to be a live fire exercise conducted by the Russian Air Defense Force. Instead, it turned into a near catastrophe for everyone nearby. The Rocket Festival is an annual celebration in Thailand. They usually hold it in mid-May, right before the start of the rainy season. Also known as the Bun Bang Phi Festival, people come from all around to fire homemade rockets into the sky. The three-day event also features parades, dances, and plenty of food and drink. 
It all kicks off with the inaugural launching of the Bang Phi rocket. This year's festival was, by most measures, a success. The event drew massive crowds from all over the world of people excited to see some rockets blast off into the sky. Of course, not every launch went according to plan. So that obviously wasn't supposed to happen. Most of the homemade rockets go off without a hitch. Someone clearly messed this one up. The rocket barely makes it off the launch stand before failing and sending debris into the lake. To the unaware spectator, you might have thought you were at a fireworks show. Thankfully, nobody was injured, and after a brief intermission to clean up and stage the next rocket, the show went on. Now, while the S-300 is primarily for defense, the Russian caliber cruise missile is designed for offense. They've been in service since 1994 and can launch from battleships, submarines, and airplanes. They're mainly used for anti-ship, anti-sub, and land attack operations. According to Russian sources, a destroyer called the Marshal Shaposhnikov was conducting live fire drills in the Sea of Japan in April of 2021. Apparently, the Shaposhnikov had just been fitted with caliber missiles. The Russians needed to make sure they worked. Well, one of them didn't. It's safe to say that that was not supposed to happen. Yes, these missiles are meant to take out submarines, just not like that. It looks like the caliber keeps moving through its ignition stages even while underwater. And when it first launches, the Russian caliber flies at subsonic speeds, that is, slower than the speed of sound. As they near their target, the missiles kick into supersonic speed, making them harder to detect, shoot down, and avoid. If you've ever played Call of Duty, you know exactly what we're talking about. On September 13th of 2001, some Russian military folks gathered in the middle of nowhere to test their S-300 rockets. Much like the other S-300 failures in this video, this one left everyone waiting with bated breath. How long are you waiting before you go near that thing? It almost looks like someone threw a giant dart next to the truck. Just look at the damage it did to the launch tube when it fell back down. A few inches to the right, and it would have slid right back inside. Now, we're not sure what the protocol is here. Do you try to detonate the rocket manually, or do you slap a band-aid on and try again? If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.